you guys. We are live. Hello, hello, hello. Give us a shout out if you are watching us live. If you are watching the replay, give us a hashtag replay. I mean us. I am here with Kisa, our mindset coach for Create My Way. Everyone say hi to Kisa. Say what's up. I'm like, oh, maybe hit record. Um, I'm so grateful for Kisa to be here. And you know, Kisa and I have been working together for years now. To create my weight. It's been almost like two, three years. Keith, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, but this is our first like live talk together, yes. which boggles my mind because I did a talk with Danielle last week and I was like, but yeah. I've been working with you longer and like we're now we're doing a talk. So we're gonna definitely do more. Um, but I'm really excited for Kisa to be here because Kisa is a master at teaching mindset. And like I mentioned, she is our mindset coach and create my weight. And the reason why we have Kisa and a mindset coach is because it is very easy for someone to tell you what to eat and that you should be working out and you should be drinking your water. You should be sleeping all the things you should be doing, but there's a reason that you're not doing it or at least not doing it consistently. Right. And that's because we have certain thoughts about those behaviors and those um, habits that you're supposed to be creating, right? Subconsciously or consciously. And that's something that we help you change in CMW. And as you can see, Kisa has her little whiteboard behind her. And there's actually a strategy we use in CMW called CTFAR. So some of our alumni or our current clients who are watching us right now, you know CTFAR very well. Um, and we teach other strategies as well, especially if it's overcoming emotional eating or the all or nothing mindset, which we'll talk a little bit about tonight. Um, but what we're talking about tonight Night, guys is perfectionism okay the good the bad and the truth about perfectionism and just so you guys know like we're not here to tell you that it's if you are a perfectionist like that's a terrible quality to have of course there's some good things in the case we'll talk about, about that um but one thing we find in cmw is that if someone expects that they have to be perfect you know for their entire duration with us or you know they have to be perfect every single meal every single day to be successful on their journey they're really setting themselves up for failure and this is something we tell people in the very beginning on our very first phone call and create my weight is like, we do not expect perfection for six, 12, 16 weeks, however long you're working with us. So um, I'm going to like, he's kind of start off with, for example, like what are some, if you are a perfectionist, you know, like what types of people maybe should be perfectionists or where that, that personality trait actually has benefits. Yeah. I mean, there, there's definitely areas in life that we want to be a perfectionist, or if you are a perfectionist, it serves you. Um, so I, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is just like goal setting. Um, as far as setting goals, if you're a perfectionist, you set high goals and you're most likely going to reach them. Um, and then also I'm thinking of like certain professions. You definitely want to be a perfectionist. Like I think of, I was telling Kristen, I'm like, I want my doctor to be a perfectionist, especially a surgeon, right? If they're going to cut me open, I want them to be very, um, have a, like attention to detail, right? And like every detail, this has to be this way. It has to be perfect. It's not like, oh, maybe I'll do it this way or maybe I'll do it that way. Um, I want it to be perfect. And then I think of like engineers and architects, like we need perfectionism. We need people who have that attention to detail, and and strive for those high standards. Not to say that people who aren't perfectionists don't strive for high standards, but you know, if you're a perfectionist out there, you know you're like, I need to be up here or else it's not, it's a no-go. So absolutely. And like I agree with you, like those particular jobs, um, like we were talking about like lawyers too, like, you know, like mm -hmm. when they're in court and they're defending you, like being able to like bring up like specific laws or like just like those kind of perfections or, or you know, interior designers, you know, or, or builders, mm -hmm. like they're doing like a home. Um, absolutely. And and of course, like being good at your job is really important. Um, but one thing that we're trying to share with you guys today is that you do not work 24-7 right? Yeah. So being a perfectionist <laughs> at work, you know, can be great in many ways. I, I'll also share the, the opposite side to that just as an entrepreneur. And oftentimes as entrepreneurs, you know, we, we feel like we have to be perfectionists and comment below guys, if you are an entrepreneur, right? If you own a business or you want to own a business and you feel like sometimes perfectionism gets in your way, 
because you are like, oh my God, like my Facebook post or like my email or my website or whatever task it is you're supposed to be doing. We have a hundred tasks to do as entrepreneurs. We feel like that task has to be perfect before we go on to the next thing. And, mm -hmm. and one thing I'm going to challenge you with is this thought here, right? That B plus work is better than A plus work that takes way longer to do. Mm -hmm. So for everyone out there that, you know, wants to build a website or wants to send out emails to their list or post on Instagram or whatever it is, and you're just like super perfectionist, like I'm going to encourage you to break out of that habit because that's one of the biggest things I've learned in building a business is if I, cause I used to be that way, you know? And I was like, well, if I get in that mindset, I'm never going to build a business. Like there's always going to be something more important to work on. Be a perfectionist with your clients. Be a perfectionist with those people who are looking for you, but then those little itty bitty details, like, don't worry about it. So anyway, so totally different than like the weight loss journey. Um, and you know, I, I love Keisha, how you brought up like goal setting, you know, and it's not about setting perfect goals. It's about setting like realistic goals. Right. And that's also something that we talk about in the program and we help people, you know, set those realistic, smart goals. Right. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, let's talk a little bit more about like how perfectionism and maybe that, like, like what the all or nothing mindset is and how that can really hinder people from being successful on this journey. Yeah, definitely. So, so perfectionism usually comes along with the all or nothing mindset where I think of the all or nothing mindset as like these polar opposites. It's like, I'm either perfect. I like in regards to diet, like I'm eating clean, I'm eating on my, my nutritional protocol or my meal plan or whatever I think is the right way to be eating. And I'm, I'm 100% there. And then I have I don't know, some trail mix. And I think that's bad. And I think I've messed up. I'm like, it's not perfect. So therefore I've messed up. And then I go to the opposite end. Right. And maybe I end up overeating. I'm like, well, I may as I already screwed up. I may as well just overeat the trail mix. And so I go to the opposite end. So that nothing is like the all or nothing. It's like, well, this isn't working. I screwed up. I may as well just start again tomorrow, right? How many of us have said, we'll start again tomorrow? Um, I said that. <laughs> like, right? Or Monday, right? I'll start again Monday. Monday or tomorrow. Great day to like start again after the weekend. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And so, so yeah, having these, these mindsets, whether it's all or nothing or that perfectionism is that when we quote unquote mess up or do something off of our plan, we tend to feel guilty about it or we feel shameful about it or we're frustrated. And then we tend to take self-destructive action or self-sabotaging action, which it could be even restricting more food. Like, oh, well, I just need to be stricter. Like I can't have trail mix in the house. I can't go to a place that sells trail mix. I can't go to a party that's going to have trail mix. You know, like you you try and control your environment. Um, so you like restrict food or you over-exercise, right? Like, oh, I ate this food. I need to burn off the calories. And so I'm going to go to the gym. And instead of working out for my one hour, which I usually do, I'm going to work out for two hours. Um, so over-exercising or just negative self-talk, which is not serving us in the long run, that's not going to serve us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That negative self-talk. I love that you brought that up. Comment below if you're watching this live or on the recording, whatever, if you feel like that negative self-talk shows up for you, like, oh my gosh, I messed up so badly. And I, I love that you brought up the trail mix example, because that was me a hundred percent. Like trail mix is like, what well, I rarely buy it anymore. Not because like, I feel like I can't control it. I totally can. I just don't crave it anymore. Cause I've changed my thinking about trail mix in general, but trail mix used to be my kryptonite specifically the monster trail mix from target. I'm like obsessed with it. And I could not control how much I ate. And then I would eat so much of it. And usually it was like mindless eating or stress eating. Cause I was an emotional eater. Um, and I'd be like, Oh, well, I've already eaten like all this trail mix. So I just like mess up my day. I should go run for two hours. So I was an over exerciser to compensate, you know, just like you were saying before about, Oh, now I have to go do this. It's this like extreme behavior and this negative thinking. Cause I was like, wow, like I can't control my sugar. I can't control my food. So I have to go do this. And that's when it finally hit me. And this was like in my twenties 
that I needed to get control of the food. I had to change my thinking about the food and, and not just about the food, but also of myself. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something we always say in emotional eating psychology is that our relationship with food directly mirrors our relationship with ourself. Right. So when I felt that, like I had to be perfect with my food choices in order to be successful, I also felt like I had to be perfect in every area of my life in order to be successful, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. such a stressful thought. I mean, comment below guys, if you're watching and you feel like you have to be perfect in all areas of your life, not just this like health and weight loss journey. So I guarantee you how we do one thing is how we do everything, right? It's showing up in multiple parts of your life. Yeah. yeah and, and just asking that question of like, if, you know, what do I make that mean when I overeat the trail mix, right? Or I have this, I feel out of control around trail mix. Like what, what does that mean about me? Like, what do I make that mean about me? And usually it's like, I'm not good enough or, you know, um, I messed up or I'll never be able to reach my goals or, you know, like there's something deeper than just the overeating of the trail mix, right. As an, as an emotional eater, right. We know it's not just about the food, but it's much deeper than just overeating the trail mix, but it's a, it's, there's something deeper in there. Yeah. And guys, there's a reason why we're doing this talk tonight in our private Facebook community versus like my personal Facebook page, because I want this to be a safe space, you know? So I want you to comment below. If you feel like you are an emotional eater, or you have these negative thoughts that are really um, you know, getting in the way of your results. I've been there. Keith has been there. A lot of our clients have been here, you know, comment below guys, if you are a current client or former client, and you came to us because you were an emotional eater, you know, and you, and you had this mindset, this all or nothing mindset. And, and I'm not saying that, you know, an emotional eater is always a perfectionist, right? Like that's not always a, a, a connection, but what we have found is that if we are a perfectionist and we stress, right? Then we can turn to food for comfort or worst case, or, or another situation is we increase our cortisol levels, right? We're like super high stress people in general, right? And then what happens when we, our cortisol levels are heightened is it makes weight loss way more difficult. There's actually something called cortisol belly. Cortisol belly is when we carry weight in our midsection. And the reason why that happens is because cortisol is harnessed in our midsection in general. So I work, you know, and the truth with emotional eating is two thirds of the population don't eat when they're stressed, right? And then a third eat when they are stressed. I was at one third. I remember like my <laughs> sister, like she's, yeah, right. And then my sister was the other two thirds and other clients we work with. We, we have clients in CMW that they don't eat when they're stressed, but mm -hmm. the problem is they have to change their thinking so that they can keep their cortisol levels down. Yeah. Yeah. So again, like this is where perfectionism can you know, impede your success in the weight loss journey. One, if we're an emotional eater, two, if we have high stress or three, if we feel like we have to do so many things and we have no time for ourselves, So we don't exercise, we don't walk, we don't sleep. Mm -hmm. We don't like follow through with these healthy habits. Yeah. That's such a good point is if we're, if we're trying to, like, I, I just go back to when you mentioned about being an entrepreneur and trying to get things perfect. I have the same, um, I actually have a lower standard. I strive for B minus work, not B plus work. So, <laughs> but I had to like, I was a perfectionist. I wanted everything to be perfect. I wanted my emails to be perfect. I wanted anything I put out there to be perfect. And it was just stopping me. So I had to let go of that. And I had to um, put out B minus work. And when we kind of strive for this perfectionist, we spend so much time, whether it's in your career, in your family, whatever, in your exercise, nutrition, we spend so much time and energy on these things, just trying to be perfect mm -hmm. that we don't have time for ourselves. We're taking away and we're not allowing ourselves to fill our cup. We're just when we're giving, giving, or like working on this project or working on that project or um, putting our energy in places and trying to be perfect, we're draining our energy. Mm -hmm. And then therefore we don't have time to fill our cup and to really give to ourselves so that we can reach our goals so that we can give to others in a way that serves us. Totally. 
And you know what? I still happen to have a cup here. I did not plan this at all. Um, I'm trying to drink my water for the day. So um, it's super important. This is what we talk about in CMW. Like it's really important to not just fill your cup, like he was just talking about, but to get it overflowing, right? So you can keep your cup full. Mm-hmm. And some of you might be watching this and you're like, how do I do that? Like I, I have kids, I have a job, I have a spouse, I have tons of obligations. I take care of my parents, you know, all these things. I have a stressful job you know, my cup is always getting drained. Like, how do I fill it up and get it overflowing? And I'm here to share with you and Keith can attest to this, that this is not like an overnight sensation that that happens. It takes time. It takes energy and it takes confidence in yourself to be quite honest, because a lot of people, we go in with that negative thought that Keith was just saying earlier, all these negative self-sabotaging thoughts. If we go in with the thought that it's not possible to fill our cup, we're never going to fill the cup. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the thought we have to have is I can fill my cup or I will fill my cup. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, or even like you can even have something more, I don't want to say extreme, but like more definitive. If I don't fill my cup, what's going to happen? Right. Like yeah. What kind of parent will I be? What kind of spouse will I be? What kind of business owner will I be or employee or whatever, whatever hat you wear in your life, you were multiple. How, how am I not showing up for others because I'm not showing up for myself? How much longer can I show up for others before I'm completely drained? I have nothing else to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I a hundred percent agree with that. And, um, I think, I think it's so, so important to, to really like ask yourself that question. Like, especially if you struggle with, um, taking care of yourself and filling your cup and you're giving to others. And so like, yes, I'm giving to others, but what is the cost to me? Hmm. What is the cost to me? Is it my health? Is it my sanity, my stress levels, my sleep? Like, what is the cost to me? And as long as like I can give to others and I know that there's, there's no cost, right? Like if I'm filling my cup and I have energy to give to others, then I know that there's no like negative, um, result on my end. There's no cost to me. Right. Exactly. And that's, that's a really good point. Like the cost, what is the cost benefit analysis or something like, Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or cost reward, something like that. So I think it's important to think of it that way, right? What is it costing me or what will it cost me not to take care of this right now Mm -hmm. and maybe create those boundaries, maybe work-life boundaries or something that we need to do. Um, or maybe it's more, maybe it's family life boundaries. Like Mm -hmm. I talk to people all the time that they're always taking care of everyone, their family or for their friends. And then they're on the back burner. Mm -hmm. Well, how much longer can that continue? And is it true that your friends or family will love you less if you're not showing up for every single thing, every single time, you know, it's, it's tough to ask those questions, but that's one of the ways in which we break out of this all or nothing mindset is when we get curious. And Kisa, you always, I always think of you about like getting curious and talk a lot about that in CMW is, is challenging those thoughts with questions, right? Because yeah, yeah, Yeah. one of the biggest things we've learned is like thoughts are not facts. Mm-hmm. I talked about this yesterday on Mindset Monday in the CMW community that oftentimes like our thoughts really do get in our way and how to change those thoughts. Um, mm-hmm. So I want to get into the truth now, right? Mm-hmm. We discussed the good yeah. about being a perfectionist, the not so good, obviously that was like our longer time, but now the truth. So Kisa, in your experience, like tell us a little bit about like what it takes to really change that perfectionism mindset and, and the truth of why it's important, for, especially for the weight loss journey. Yeah. In regards to the weight loss journey, I mean, we have to let go. We have to let go of the perfectionism. And now I'm not saying we have to like, just not care about anything. Like that's not what I'm saying at all. But if you're like a hundred percent perfectionist, can you get to a 90% perfectionist? Right? Like just let go of it a little bit because when we, if we have perfectionism around food, we're never going to be successful. And that's okay because we are human beings and we live in a society where there is instant gratification 
all around us all day long. Like we can go out and get ice cream. We can have food delivered to our house now. Like that is crazy. So, so when we have these, like these almost, it's basically, if you're like, I'm going to be perfect with my nutrition, that's an unattainable goal. So creating these realistic goals that maybe like, instead of like no sugar. So a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not going to eat any sugar, right? I'm not going to have any sugar. Okay. How about instead of being a hundred percent on that, we go to 90%. I'm going to have a treat once a week, or I'm going to have a treat twice a week. Yeah. Right. Like that is letting go of perfectionism. So it doesn't have to be the complete opposite, but it can be like, okay, if I'm at a hundred percent, how can I get to 90%? And just like, like ease off of it a little bit. Um, but, but it's really like, it's, it's going to help you in the long run. And I know it seems counterintuitive because it's like, well, I shouldn't be eating sugar. If I want to lose weight, I shouldn't be eating sugar. Like everybody tells me this, like sugar's bad for you. Okay. But if we restrict sugar, we restrict it, restrict it, restrict it. And then you end up overeating and binging. You're going to be right back where you started. Yeah, I totally agree with that. And, you know, I used to be very all or nothing, you know, um, and, and that's something I really worked hard on breaking. And I love that you said the 90%. Mm-hmm. Because it's not like we're trying to get rid of it completely, right? Just like a little bit. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And one truth I'll bring up to you guys is like, let's say your goals, like, let's say you are going on stage for a, a bikini competition, or you're a professional athlete, and there's very strict standards for nutrition, and you have to have a certain physique, like for, for a short period of time, you know, you are eating very clean, you're following very specific protocol. And that is about being perfect or like 90% amazing, right? 95% amazing. That's not what we're talking about. The truth is, yes, if you want to get on stage, like from my bikini competitors or physique competitors, you want to be at eight to 10% body fat for a man, 10 to 12 for a female. I used to work with bikini competitors. Some of you guys know that. Um, that's not what we're discussing. <laughs> that's a whole different ball game. I was actually talking to an MMA fighter today and he has a fight coming up September 30th. And like, yes, he has to follow a very rigorous protocol to cut in time for his event. That's different. Kisa and I are talking about people like us, right. Who are just like wanting to be healthy. Yep. wanting to be fit. <laughs> they want a lifestyle change. They are not looking to count every calorie track, every macro, because in our experience, that is not a sustainable way of living. We can do that in the short term, but mm-hmm. what we're saying is perfectionism and minimizing that thought process is incredibly important for the long-term success. And most people come to us in CMW because they have had short-term success, right? They've done different diets. They've been super strict. They've counted calories. They've counted macros. They've done keto. They've done Weight Watchers. They've done the whole 33 times, like whatever it is, they have been successful, but they haven't had the long-term progress. Right. And it's oftentimes not just because of what they're doing, like the, the way they're eating or the way they're exercising is not sustainable, but their thinking is not sustainable either. That's what CMW was built for, right? We focus on four elements. We call it the four steps of food freedom, nutrition, fitness, mindset, which is key, key, key as we're talking tonight and accountability, right? Mm -hmm. Those four steps are crucial for your long-term success. This way the weight, not just it comes off, but it stays off and you don't have to reinvent the wheel and figure out a new diet or a new strategy. You know, you're going to learn your strategy for success. And that's something we do in create my way, you know? And it's funny because Keith, I'm sure you hear this a lot too. Like a lot of people just think like, yeah, like tell me what to eat and like, tell me what to work out. Like, I'll just follow an app. I'll just like follow what other people are doing. And again, that's a short-term solution. So this mm-hmm. is why Create My Weight was born. This is why we have Keith on our team um, because we realize that mindset is everything. Comment in the chat here if you know the mindset is key for you to change. Maybe you're like resonating with what we're talking about tonight. I would love for you guys, like I said, this is a private space. No one can see this, but people just in our group who are all in the same boat, your friends and family can't see you. So comment below with like maybe a thought or a, an experience in your life that is holding you back from getting the results that you want. I would love for you to share that with us. We've seen everything, 
you know, in CMW, um, and we love helping people overcome the cycles of self-sabotage, emotional eating, the all or nothing mindset. And when you're being really hard on yourself, like how to silence that mean girl, I always say inside of you. Um, so comment below guys. And again, like, you know, we'll respond. We, um, want to hear what you have to say. Um, but yeah, the truth is, is it's fixable. Absolutely. You know, 100%. totally fixable with the right support, you know, dealing with emotions on your own is not easy. Not at all, you know, and that's why there's therapists out there and, you're, and people watching might be thinking, well, yes, I talked to my therapist about this, or maybe I'll just go get a therapist. There are, first of all, there's all different kinds of therapy, right? Just like there's all different types of doctors and there's different types of nutritionists and different types of other jobs you're talking about tonight, lawyers, architects, all kinds of things, all different types. Same thing when it comes to therapy, right? And then what we do in CMW that is different than a traditional therapist or different kinds of therapy is we focus really on changing your relationship with food, number one, right? Like changing your food story and also changing the way you think about this whole process and like about the all or nothing mindset when it comes to your health and weight loss journey. So we're really like laser focused on that. So you can be successful um, in this area of your life. Okay. So if you're looking for help with that, I'm going to drop our link below to schedule a call with us, createmyweight.com forward slash apply, because yeah, working through these obstacles does require some deep thought and work. And we have a one-on-one -on -one program in CMW and Kisa meets with clients one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but it let, let, so that's the first option I'm going to give you guys. If you're watching, I invite you to schedule a complimentary call with us. Um, the second option I will offer to you is that we actually have something starting next week, which I'm really excited about. It's the CMW summer challenge. We do them every summer. I don't even know which number this is, but, um, we, you will get a chance in our two week challenge. Um, you'll have a private community to engage with and you'll see Kisa, um, once a week, like next week, next Thursday, she'll be talking about this topic, the all or nothing mindset in the community. So it's a great way for you to at least like start to understand just how significant of an issue this is for you and to raise awareness about it. And then you can decide if you want to get more support with it. So that's something really cool about our upcoming challenge. Like not only will we give you some new recipes and you'll have new workouts to do and you'll have a community and just be held accountable for some healthy habits to instill, but you'll raise more awareness about changing your mindset. And if you want more help after that, you could always win four weeks of coaching, which is amazing. A lot of people, um, I know Cindy watching right now, you know, they have did, they've done our challenge and then they go on to do the program after. Um, but like I mentioned before, if you know, this is something you need help with and you're like, I'm, I need this immediately. I don't want to wait. This is holding me back. I want to go into August feeling better. It's already July 11th. Holy moly you know, I encourage you to book a call with us because we can help you start feeling better ASAP, get you out of your head and into your heart and into a journey that will work for you once and for all, right? And you'll meet Kisa and get to work with her as well. And myself, and you met Danielle last week on our talk. Um, we have a great team. So yeah, Kisa, any last words you want to share? Or, um, anything about mindset or, you know, I, I think like any last words would be just take it little by little, mm. right? This is not an overnight like change that you make as far as mindset goes. Like I always like to think of mindset is like going to the gym in order to see changes. We need to go consistently over a period of time. So it's something that we work on consistently over time. Um, and so, and so having patience with yourself being kind with yourself um, and, and really having an open mind about perfectionism and, around food and nu uh, nutrition and maybe even working out uh, mm -hmm. and seeing if like, hmm, am I a perfectionist? And maybe could I kind of like scale back a little bit? Yeah, totally. I love that. I love that, that thought process and just taking one step at a time. And if you want some help taking it one step at a time, like you don't know which step to take first, or you don't know where to start. How yeah. do I do this? Yeah. You know, oh, this can be a really, you know, scary journey. Not honestly scary, but very eye-opening journey. And um, looking for some help, I'll drop our link below. 
Um, if you want just to kind of start learning about it, our summer challenge is a great opportunity. It's two weeks, $69. I mean, for two weeks of support, holy moly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll drop that link below as well. Um, but I want to thank Kisa for joining us tonight. I didn't even get to look at the comments. Holy, I'm usually really good about that. Um, <laughs> but I don't see them right now for some reason, but yeah, guys comment below. Um, and let us know if this served you. I hope it did. Keith, I thank you so much for joining us. And we'll do it. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Have a good night, you guys. Bye. See you later.